What's up everybody, my name is Colby Novak with Nocturnal Custom PC and Server and in today's episode I'm going to show you exactly how you can make your very own home server or NAS unit out of parts you can find at your local tech shop and get results just like this. For this project you'll need a few things. First, some hard drives, some RAM, a sufficient power supply, a flash drive for Unraid, and a motherboard and a dual core CPU or better. First, we need to take off the side panels to get inside the case. Simply unscrew the two screws and the side panel should pop off easily. Next, we need to install the CPU into the motherboard. Make sure to take note of the arrow on the motherboard and CPU. They need to align together. The CPU should, without force, slide into the socket. Put down the retention arm and your CPU is now installed. Next, we need to attach the heatsink. Make sure there is thermal compound on the CPU or heatsink. Click all four pins and make sure they are secure. Give it a little wiggle and check the underside to make sure all the clips have gone in securely. We need to now install the RAM. Be sure to look at the notch on the board and the RAM itself to make sure they are lined up before properly installing. Gently press down and you should hear a click. For Unraid, RAM is really not important. Four gigabytes should do you just fine. For smaller projects, we've got an eight gig stick for future expansion. Install the power lead for the fan into the CPU header on the motherboard. Line up the notch on the motherboard with the connector. Now it's time to put in the back shield. This is purely for aesthetics. So if your machine doesn't have it, it's okay. This is just to protect dust from getting inside the case. We need to now install the standoffs into the case. Depending on your board, this will vary from board to board. Match them up with the holes on the motherboard and screw them into place with the included screws. This is a must step. It protects the board from touching the case and shorting out. And we all know that's a bad thing. We don't want you losing data here. Let's install the power supply next. Simply slide it into place and screw it down. Simple as that. Next, we need to attach the power leads to the board from the power supply. Connect the 24 pin and the CPU cable to the appropriate connection on the board. They will only go in one way, so don't force it. They should simply pop in and you should hear a click. We now need to install the front I.O. Plug in the pins to their spot on the board. This isn't necessary for a NAS. The only pin that we absolutely need is the power switch, and even then we could probably get away for it. Refer to the board manual for the pin diagram. Now we can install our hard drives. Simply slide each drive and screw into place. Repeat this for every single drive that you have. Some drives may have three screws, but mainly the newer models have only two on each side. Bolt them into place to secure them properly. A little bit of cable management keeps dust to a minimum and lets the air go through the case nice and easy. 
This keeps our hard drive and our CPU nice and cool. Now install the SATA power cables to the drives. Note the notch on the cable and on the drive. Line them up properly and plug it in. You shouldn't have to force this connection. It can only go in one way. Now install the SATA cable. Just like the power cable, it can only go in one way. Line up the notch on the board and on the drive and on the cable and just snap it in. On SATA cables, you'll hear a snap if it's got a locking connector. Do a little bit more cable management and you're golden, ready to install Unraid. Installing Unraid is quite easy. Go to LimeTech's website and download the latest version of Unraid. Next, format the flash drive to a FAT32 and rename it in all caps Unraid. Next, take the files that you downloaded and copy them over to your flash drive. On the drive, click the Make This Bootable file and run as admin. Follow the instructions on your screen and you're set. Insert the flash drive into the new server and turn it on. Once powered up, Unraid should automatically boot. Let it do its thing. Make sure the server has a wired internet connection and wait for it to give you an IP address at the very end. Now type that IP address into a browser on a computer that is on the same network as the server, either on a wired, Wi-Fi, or whatever kind of internet connection you may have. And once you do this, a GUI should appear on the screen. Follow the on-screen instructions to obtain the trial or purchase a key. Once the key is installed, go to main and select the drives you want to use. Make sure the biggest drive you have is used for the parity. If they're all the same size, select one of the drives to be used as a parity. If you choose a drive that is too small, your parity will not work and your data will not be secure. Once all your drives are selected, now start the array and let Unraid rebuild the system. Next, let's add a few shares, that way we have the server all nice and organized. You can assign certain drives to certain shares, so if you have a quick RAID 0 array in the server, you can dedicate for that for one share. And if you have a backup RAID, like RAID 5 for instance, you can dedicate that RAID array to a certain share. That's a topic for another day and something that's way more complicated, so we'll cover that in a future video. Now create a username and password by going to user in the top menu and hit click create new. Fill in everything, set a password and you're done. Your servers now show up as tower on your own network. Again my name is Colby Novak and if you have any questions please leave a comment down below and I'll try to answer all of your questions in a future video. And as always thank you again for watching this video and if you have any questions like I said leave a comment and don't forget to subscribe. See ya.